Hi everybody. Today I wanted to just spend a few moments here and talk to you about this little device here. This is an MIB 238. It's designed by Eric Pearson and built by John Lundy. It was sent to me. I ordered it from John. I'm doing some testing on it, then I'm sending it on to a friend. It's an interesting device. I'll put another picture up here so you can see where I'm going with it. It has an attachment so you can plug in a serial modem, another attachment so you can plug in a serial terminal, an attachment so you can plug in a parallel printer, an attachment here so you can hook it up to your memory expansion card so you can have more than 64K of expanded memory, and it has an empty chip slot or chip socket. That's for expansion ROM. Clico, when they designed the Atom, I don't know if it was why, what, what they were thinking in the future, but they said, let's throw everything at it. So not only do you have 64K inside, they gave it the ability to have 64 more K, or even more so after that. Then you also have a cartridge. So it gives you another 32K of ROM. And then they decided, well, let's give it another expansion of 32K ROM. They never, as far as we were able to determine, they never created a ROM for this. I've heard someone say that there was a ROM for this that would turn Smart Writer right here, change the language into French, but I can't see Coleco making that at the time. I've heard that somebody else has a copy of a ROM that goes in here for diagnostic purposes. But other than that, nobody's made a ROM for it. There was never a ROM available. I started thinking about that because I'm getting about ready to send this back to the, or send this out to the guy that bought it. And I started thinking, how hard would it be to make a ROM for this? I mean, obviously it's just Z80 code and I know it inside and out on this Clico, or on this Atom. So I started digging in to the EOS boot software to find out how the Atom starts up. And the Atom's kind of interesting. When it first turns on, inside here, there is Smart Writer ROM and then there's a ROM that has EOS on it. EOS, if you don't know, I say EOS a lot, but EOS, EOS stands for Elementary Operating System. It's basically the bare bones, the guts, the BIOS of the Atom. Then uh, sometimes I'll say OS7. OS7 is the operating system for the ColecoVision, which is also in here too. So what happens is when you first turn the Atom on, Smart Writer ROM kicks in in the First thing Smart Writer ROM does is toggles in this expansion ROM. The memory mapping, as I mentioned before, is kind of interesting. I should have a little poster up here. The lower 32K, when you first turn the computer on, normally the, the lower 32K is RAM, the upper 32K is RAM. When you turn it on in Smart Writer mode, the lower 32K is Smart Writer ROM, the upper 32K is RAM. If you go into ColecoVision mode, the lower 32K, only 8K really, but the lower 32K is OS 7, and there's 1K of RAM in there. And the upper 32K is whatever cartridge you have. But if you happen to have an expansion ROM in here, when you boot it up, Smart Writer looks for this expansion ROM and says, oh, there's something else to do instead. And immediately toggles this into the upper 32K ROM leaves itself in the lower 32k ROM and jumps here and lets it take over. I'll show you in the code how that works and what it looks at because if, if you've seen how I've coded uh, the stuff I've shown before it's kind of interesting that on the cartridge there's a header byte at 8000 hex. If it's AA55 then ColecoVision OS 7 will display the ColecoVision title screen. If it's 55AA, then ColecoVision OS 7 won't display the title screen, just jumps to the ROM to run. If it's CA53, then when you're booting CPM, if you have a RAM disk in here, CPM will copy the cartridge to the RAM disk. And if it's 99, 6A, Smart Writer ROM will jump to the ROM you have in here. So what I did is, I'm going to shut this off here, what I did is I made a small program and I put it on ROM. 
I burn it to a ROM. So I'm going to put it in here for right now. I got to look close. I just want to make sure I don't get none of the pins bent. Be careful. They did make this kind of hard to work with. It's really tight in there, but okay. So now I got that in here. I'm going to install it in here. <laughs> and now I'm going to turn it on and the screen's not even warmed up, but boom. Hello world. That's my program I wrote. I'll show you the code and I'm going to go over the code in a few minutes. It's, it's kind of fascinating. I had to basically recreate the wheel because I don't have EOS to work with. I don't have OS 7 to work with, so I had to do everything myself. But I made a hello world on that cartridge or on that ROM. And I'm going to show you how it's done. All right, so here we have my code. I called the demo of using the expansion ROM, eromdemo.z80. This is written as, obviously, in Z80 code. First thing I did is I set up some variables. These, I, I really comment the heck out of this, and this will be down in the description, a link to it, which will be on the archive. So the first thing I do is set up some variables. These right here, these are my registers for the VDP. These right here is what ports are actually used with the VDP, the control and data ports. These right here, are the addresses in the VRAM for the pattern, the name, the color, the sprite, attributes, and sprites. Pattern is your fonts. Name is your screen data. Color is your color table for your fonts. Sprite attributes are your attributes for sprites. And sprite is your sprite data. Then this next block is the 16 possible colors that you can have on the, on the Coleco, on the Atom. And then here is what I want to be foreground, which is white, and background, which is dark blue. The first thing I do, this is the org, this is the org where it starts, the origin. It starts at 800 hex. The, the first bytes, which is actually a word, the first two bytes is 9966 hex. This is the identifier that SmartWriter sees to realize that there's an expansion ROM there and goes and jumps to it. So as soon as SmartWriter sees that, it jumps to the next address, which I'm calling program, but it's the next byte on the expansion room. So here's my code. First thing I want to do is I need some RAM to work with because I need a place for my stack. When SmartWriter sends it over here, it's got ROM in the bottom and ROM in the top. There's no RAM, and I need RAM for the stack. The stack holds your return addresses when you do a call and a return. So first thing I do is I switch it so that I have RAM in the lower 32K and the expansion ROM still in the upper 32K. I set that by putting the, address, the value 5 in register A and then output it to output it to port 7FH, which tells the memory manager in the Atom to change the memory setup. Next thing I do is I set my stack to start at the top of the lower 32K and work its way down. And then I disable any interrupts just in case they happen to be floating around. Now I need to initialize the VDP because, as I said earlier, when we enter this here, nothing's been done. I should actually turn off the sound too because there's a possibility that the sound chip could be humming, but I'm not worried about it. So in here I have to set up the VDP. The VDP is, it's, it's not hard to set up, but it's a little difficult. You have to set up seven registers. So I'm just going through here and I just set them up. Um, register zero you put a value of zero in it. Register one, I put a value of 224, which tells it that I want 32 column by 24 row graphics. Then register two, I tell it where the screen data is. Register three, I tell it where the color data is. Register four, I tell it where the font data is. Register five, I tell it where the sprite attribute data is. And register six, I tell it where the sprite data is. So that's it right there, you're setting, the, you're setting up the registers. And as I say in here, at this point, the VDP is set up, but it doesn't have anything to work with. The VRAM is empty. Well, technically, it may have garbage in there, too, because I'm not clearing the VRAM. So the first thing I do is I need to set up some characters. What I do is I have down here, I'm going to scroll down here. I created some characters for the word Hello World. I didn't want to create a whole alphabet. I just only needed seven characters. So this is the data for Hello World. That's a space, obviously, all blank. This is a character H. 
you can probably see the letter H in there in the ones. This is the E, the L, the O, the W, R, and D. So I set those up in there. I mean, I set those up in there. What I do now is I need to tell the VDP what this data is. So I tell, I put in an HL, I put the address for the characters, starting at space. I'm going to copy over 64 bytes. I put that in BC. And I put in DE, the register DE, I put the address in VRAM of where the font data is. Then I jump to a routine called write VRAM. Now this exists on the OS 7, and it also exists in EOS, but we don't have that here, so I had to rework it. So I made a very dumbed down modified version of it. And basically all this does is it will copy over. You go in here with HL pointing to the data you want to copy, DE to pointing to where you want to put it, and BC how many, byte, how many bytes you want to copy, and this will copy it over to VRAM. Quick and dirty. So we, what we've done at that point is we've copied over to VRAM, to the video RAM, we've copied over our font. Now we need to give it some colors. The VDP, the way it works with fonts, is there are 32 color groups. Each group is eight characters long. So group zero is the first eight characters. Group one is characters eight through 15. Group two is 16 through 23, and so on all the way up. I'm not breaking it down. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna fill all 32 groups with the foreground and the background. So what I do is I take the foreground, multiply it times 16, add the background, and put that in the reg register A. In HL, I put the address of where the color table is in VRAM, and I tell it I want to copy 32 bytes, and I go to fill VRAM to copy it over. Now I need to clear the screen, because there's some residual garbage in there. If I'm using the emulator, that's nice and clean. But when you first turn on your computer, you could have garbage in the VRAM. So I'm going to clear the screen out. What I do here is I put the value of 0, which I set up as my space, in register A. I, tell, I put in register HL lib name, which is the address of the screen data. And I want to do 24 rows of 32 characters each. I put that in DE. I go fill the VRAM. So that's done. Now I'm going to put into HL the address of text. Text is right down here at the bottom. That's this line right here. And if you look what I typed up in there, this is hello world in my sudo ASCII. That's an H, that's an E, that's an L, that's an L, that's an O, that's a space, a W, an O, an R, an L, and a D. So I put that address in HL. I put in BC 11, that's 11 characters I want to copy. And DE, I put in where I want to put it, which is again lib name. I'm going to start at upper left hand corner which is zero zero I'm not worried about rows and columns because I'm not gonna do any kind of screen wrap it's only 11 pieces 11 characters so I jump to VRAM or write VRAM and that copies the hello world to the screen once that's done I, and it comes back now what I do is I just loop I just tell it to loop I just sit here forever just going in circles just so you can see it on the screen so that's the code and then there's a little routine down here, write VDP. This is what I use to write to the registers. Again, this came from EOS, and I just modified it to fit in here. And that's it. Very simple little program. Compiles out to, I don't know, how many bytes it was it? 20, 30 bytes. And then what I do at the end here is I pad it with zeros so that it actually fills a 32K of ROM. And I compile it. Copy it to the EEPROM, put the EEPROM in the, in the expansion ROM, and let it go from there. Alright, so as you, saw, as you saw, the coding is really easy for anyone who writes Z80 code, it is. So it's a very fascinating little thing. I have a blank board. I may get the parts to populate it, I may not, I don't know yet. There's not much on here. Really, the only thing I'd really be interested in is that right there. So I might just make a board that lets me just plug an expansion ROM in there. But if you could think of any reason why we would need an expansion ROM in here, what we could use it for, leave a message in the comments. Let me know, what would you want in an expansion ROM? Remember, it doesn't have to take over the atom. It can, but it can just make some changes and kick back to SmartWriter or you could have BASIC on here. You turn it on instantly in BASIC. The Smart Basic does exist in a cartridge format, but you could have a Smart Basic on here. You could have CPM on here if you wanted. 
though uh, yeah I guess you could but again still you're gonna have to have data drives or you're gonna have to have disk drives or ADD but you could do something in there it'd be fascinating let me know could you think of anything that we could put on an expansion room let me know so I hope that was educational hope you found it interesting have a great one